In this session, I'm going to be talking about heat capacity and specific heat capacity, both related to the topic of thermal physics. I'm going to start off with a thought experiment. Imagine you're cooking a Sunday roast. You're roasting a chicken and some potatoes. First bit of thinking is, if I had a heated oven and placed the chicken inside, what would happen to the temperature of the chicken? Well, clearly, the temperature of the chicken is going to get higher. Um, to reach thermal equilibrium with the um, higher temperature of the oven, um, thermal energy would enter the chicken, so raising its temperature. Now consider um, me having a selection of potatoes, which are of exactly the same mass as the chicken. If I put these at the same time, would the change in temperature be of an equivalent rate? Now this is a more tricky bit of thinking here. Some people might say, well, of course, if we're going to the oven, everything's going to heat up at the same rate. But that's actually not the case. The reason for that is because of something known as the thermal capacity of an object. The thermal capacity of the object describes how quickly the temperature will change dependent on the amount of energy going in. So in this case, a body with a high heat capacity will take in thermal energy at a slower rate um, and therefore its temperature change will be less. This is likely to be the potatoes. Whilst something with a higher, uh, lower heat capacity will be able to um, increase its temperature with a lower intake of thermal energy, which is likely to be the chicken. The chicken is likely to get hotter quicker. This thing called thermal capacity also describes when things cool down. It's the reason why some things cool down quicker than others. So, this thing called thermal capacity. Um, it's shown as capital C, that's the symbol. And it's actually the change in energy uh, per change in temperature. So the energy change, the temperature of a body by unit temperature. Let's consider using this in a question. It kind of comes to life here. I'm given two kilogram cylinder of copper and it's heated from room temperature, which is 20 degrees, to 500 degrees centigrade. So that means that the change in temperature is 480 degrees. Now, 374 kilojoules of thermal energy was transferred during this process, and we want to work out the heat capacity of this piece of copper. Now, considering what we already know, we can place the change in uh, temperature, which is 480, and we've also got the amount of energy which went in, which is 374 times 10 to the 3, remembering those kilojoules. So that tells me that the capacity is 7, thermal capacity is 780 joules per degree centigrade. So 780 joules are required to raise this object by one degree centigrade. That's thermal capacity. Let's think about another bit of Sunday roast physics. If I double the amount of water in a pan, but use the same flame setting, so that providing the same amount of energy, um, what would happen to the rise in temperature? Well, clearly the rate of rise in temperature is going to be reduced. It's not going to go as quickly. So this tells us that the amount of mass does have an impact on this. And this is taken into consideration with something known as the specific heat capacity. The specific heat capacity is defined as the amount of thermal energy required to produce a unit temperature rise in a unit mass of the material. So how much energy is required to increase it by one degree if we have one kilogram of the object. The specific heat capacity, therefore, is equal to the uh, amount of energy that goes in divided by the mass and the change in temperature. The units are given as joules per kilogram per Kelvin, um, where M is the mass of the material. This is normally shown, or the formula which we normally remember, is the amount of energy is equal to the mass times the specific, specific heat capacity. Note that's a small c. Um, times the change in temperature. With that formula, we can calculate any unknown given a certain problem. 
Here's an example problem. A two kilogram cylinder of copper. So I've used exactly the same example as used before. We've got two kilograms. That two kilograms is now important though. Um, is heated from room temperature to 500 degrees centigrade. So that means there's a 480 degree uh, change in temperature. This could be centigrade or Kelvin. And again, it took me 374 kilojoules of thermal energy was transferred during this process. Now, putting in what I know, I know the change in energy, I know the mass, and I know the change in temperature. So this gives me 390 joules per kilogram per centigrade. That per centigrade could be per Kelvin, remember, because they're of equal size. Now let's consider another problem. Um, this gives me the specific heat capacity of copper as 390 uh, joules per uh, per kilogram per degree temperature. Um, this time, I've been given a 25 kilogram cylinder of copper heated from room temperature and it required 374 kilojoules of energy, but this time the temperature of the copper only rose to 58.4 degrees centigrade. Calculate the specific heat capacity of the piece of copper. Now obviously you've recognized this is a trick question. Not so much as the question is a trick, but you already know the answer. Because even though the mass has changed, the specific heat capacity of copper is always a constant. So if I go through this calculation, I should come out with the same numbers. And I will get 390 joules per kilogram per degree centigrade as the specific heat capacity of copper. Specific heat capacities, therefore, are constant for the material and they're not affected by the mass. Here we've got a range of different specific heat capacities. We have different specific heat capacities because of the structure of these different materials. Um, and sometimes these structures are quite complicated. You'll notice here that um, we've got several different metals there, but there doesn't seem to be a theme there. Although metals heat up quickly, Different materials have different properties, so these properties cause them to have different specific heat capacities, depending on their structure. Uh, it becomes even more confusing if we look at things like water. Now, water, you'll notice, has a different specific heat capacity depending in the state it is, as a solid, as a liquid, or as a gas. And this is all due to uh, the amount of freedom that the particles have and how the heating process um, can get into the material. So with ice, we've got a sot set solid material with very set volume, and therefore you're heating up the same side at the same time, and that has an impact. Whilst with liquid, because of that change of uh, state, we have different molecules moving around all the time. All this brings to conclude the idea of specific heat capacities.